Hey guys, my name is Boris. I'm a board certified physician assistant. And the title of today's video is going to be, Will PA School Take a Chance on Me? Let's say you're not the most competitive applicant. You know, maybe your GPA is okay, but it's not great. Maybe you have a decent amount of hours, maybe even have like 10,000. You've been working in the field for a long time, but you know, your grades aren't solid or for whatever reason, you're just not terribly competitive. You're below average in some category that's important. Usually it's great. It's almost always GPA. You know, just being perfectly honest, it's almost always that. So what if a lot of things are in check? What if you're a good person, good, solid person with a lot of experience? People tell you your whole life, you know, you would be a great provider. You'd be a great PA. You know, they'd be stupid not to let you in, not to take a chance on you. Uh, you know, so what if your GPA is 3.1? So what if your GPA is 2.75? You know, you'd be a great provider. People love you. People connect with you well. You have such great people skills. You know, you have so much experience as an EMT or a paramedic. You know, why couldn't you be a PA working in the emergency department? You know, you have so much experience. You probably have more knowledge than a lot of PAs that do work in emergency medicine. You know, why wouldn't a PA school just take a chance on you? Uh, not to be a Debbie Downer, but let me answer that question very thoroughly. Why exactly? a school may not take a chance on you, okay? If you happen to have low grades. Here's why. The very, very simple, oversimplified, easy response to that is PA school's hard. I wish it was you know, more complicated than that, but it's, it's because PA school is hard. It's because the curriculum is insane. It's like, it's cruel. It's, it's so hard that it just, it shouldn't be like, you shouldn't be able to put people through that. It's that hard. You know, the smartest people, the best students, like their whole life, 4.0 students, high school, 4.0 students, college, fantastic at studying, fantastic at learning, huge amounts of information very quickly and then regurgitating them on a test. Fantastic on test scores, great GREs, great SATs, great ACTs, you know, top of their class their whole life. These people still struggle. The smartest people you know, think about the nerdiest, smartest person in your high school class, in your college class. Maybe you made fun of them, maybe you didn't, I don't know. But imagine that person just having a very tough time and constantly feeling like they're behind for two whole years. Every day for two whole years, studying seven days a week, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 hours a week, and still feeling like they're constantly behind. That's how hard it is, okay? It's not a joke. It's an insane amount of information. It's an education that should take, you know, three, four years, but it takes two, it takes two and a half. And that's part of the appeal of the PA program is you get to be done faster. You get to practice medicine faster. The cost of that is an insanely, unfairly, ridiculously difficult program, particularly in the didactic year when you're doing all the actual class time, okay? So that's why PA schools, in particular, require a very, very, very high undergraduate GPA, not because they're mean, not because they don't like you, not because you're not a good person, not because they don't want to take a chance on you. It's because if, let's say they take a chance on you and you get in and you fail, you fail out the first semester, you fail out after two semesters of didactic year, who is that helping? Is that helping you? No. You just wasted a ton of time, a ton of money, a ton of hope for the future, all this like energy that you put in financially, physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, hoping, thinking like, oh man, I got in, I'm gonna be a PA, I'm gonna have this amazing career, and then boom, it's all taken away because you got a C plus. You know, most PA, PA schools, most PA schools require a 3.0 GPA, most PA schools require a B or better in every single class. So, boom, you got a 79%, you're out, you're done. All that money you paid, all that preparation you did, all that you know, hope and energy that I just talked about, gone. It doesn't matter because the standards are the standards and the standards are high because you literally have lives at your, not like disposal, but like in your hands, you know? You have to know this stuff. You have to know an insane amount of information very quickly and be able to pull it out at a moment's notice when you see something, when you see a patient. So medicine's not a joke and neither is PA school because medicine's not a joke, so hence PA school's not a joke, it's very serious, and they have to, have to have extreme confidence in your ability to get through the school academically, okay? So that's why 
unfortunately, it's not about you being a good person. It's not about you having potential. It's about hard numbers, hard facts. Is your GPA, have you shown a consistent ability to take lots of classes, a full schedule of hard upper level bio and chem courses at the same time, not one here, two there, you know, part time, no, full time, four or five classes at a time, 16 or 20 credits for a couple of semesters at least and get a very high GPA because college compared to PA school is a joke. My post back at Cornell University taking 20 credits, you know, at a time with a bunch of ridiculously smart kids, that was a joke compared to PA school. Okay, that's a lie. No, I think I studied more in post back, but that's because I cared about my GPA and PA school GPA doesn't matter, you know? Uh, so I think that's why I studied harder in post back uh, than I did in PA school, but still PA school, I felt like I was constantly behind, like I just told you, you know? So that's why perhaps it's not about you. It's not about PA schools not wanting to take a chance on you or being mean. It's because they have to, have to, have to have extreme confidence in your academic abilities to get through the program. Because if you don't, that hurts you first and foremost. It hurts the person that they could have let in that might have had a better chance at getting through the program. It hurts them uh, because there's so limited spots, you know, and we need providers. There's a provider shortage. So anybody that has a high level of confidence that could get through the program should be in that. The PA schools should give that person the spot and not take a chance on someone who has a lower likelihood of getting through the program, you know. And it also hurts the school because their stats go down. They, you know, maybe get less funding, whatever the case may be. It's not good for them if you don't get through the program. And also, it hurts your potential patients because let's say you do get in, you know, and you're someone who maybe should not have gotten in. You're below standard for some reason. And somehow you get through. I don't know if you end up cheating. I don't know if you end up, you know, abusing stimulants like Adderall. I don't know. For some reason, you get through the program some way, somehow, and you shouldn't have been in there in the first place. Then your patients suffer. You know, because you just are not the kind of person that is able to handle these things and not everybody can, okay? Not, it's not fair, it's totally unfair, but not everybody can handle this kind of schooling and this kind of work. You know, it's not for everybody, unfortunately. So it's, again, I'm gonna say this for like a ninth time, I'm a broken record, I'm sorry, but the main thesis of this video is it's not PA schools or medicine being mean and not taking a chance on you because you might be a very, very good person it's just that they have to, have to, have a very, very high amount of confidence in your academic abilities. And there is really no getting away from that. How do you reverse that? How do you prove, even if you haven't had a good GPA, how do you reverse that and prove to PA schools or medical schools or whoever that you can study, that you are good academically? Watch this video right here, how to fix a bad GPA. I'll see you in the next video.